Good morning, dear Stitchers. It's Judy with GBW Designs. And I'm sorry to say that this is my second try at this video. I was zooming along. I think I was at least a half an hour into it. And I realized I couldn't see a timestamp in the lower left hand corner, which is not a good sign. And as you know, I am not tech savvy. So here we go. I've done a whole practice and maybe even this time will be better than my first round. I'm going to have to delete that other one. So anyhow, welcome. Thank you for watching. Thank, I welcome the, my viewers who have been with me for a long time and hopefully I'll have some new viewers too. So as I mentioned, I'm Judy with GBW Design. This is uh, floss tube number 58. I live in Kalamazoo, Michigan. It's a beautiful, sun, sunny summer day here, and I have a lot to tell you. I just got back last uh, Saturday night from StitchCon, and I wanted to kind of give you an overview of what that event is like. Um, perhaps you've been to it already, and you know how much fun it is, or perhaps you've been thinking about going and were curious about it. So before we start with that topic, and then of course I have lots of models to show you, I want to give you a few life updates. First of all, and this is very exciting, um, my husband and I have two children and six grandchildren. And our oldest grandson, Wyatt, and his wife, Kylie, have been in Uganda on a mission trip for 10 months. And thankfully, uh, they just arrived home Thursday night. And I sadly had made my commitment to StitchCon, and so I missed their homecoming that night. But I was, yeah, that's why I came back early. I saw them on Sunday several times, and I had tears in my eyes when I saw them. I was just so glad that they were back safe and sound. They're just such a sweet couple. The most exciting news that I've known about for some time but wasn't allowed to tell is that they are expecting a baby. So I am going to be a great grandmother at Christmas time. And I'm so excited. I love being a Nana and I'm sure I love being a great grandmother too. The other life update I have for you, which you've all been very good about asking about, is my neighbor Sue, whose husband was in a very serious accident. I think it was almost a month ago. And he is still in an acute care center. He's making progress, but it's very slow. And I just think Sue is, uh, she's such a devoted caregiver. She was a nurse in her previous career, so you know she knows exactly what's going on. Um, but it's going to be a long, slow recovery. So we're all continuing to send her hugs and prayers for her husband, Tim. So my first um, topic today is going to be, of course, StitchCon and what it was like. So the event is so much fun. I absolutely loved every minute of it. I hope I can go back next year. You know, you have to get in uh, very quickly to be accepted, but I would love to return. Now that I've been once, I realize how special it is. So it is an event put on by Barbara. Uh, Hills at Keepsakes in Cincinnati, that's the name of her shop, and her whole staff. I bet she had, oh gosh, at least 10 or 12 people there, and they do a marvelous job. It's very organized. So I'm going to give you just the kind of the details of what the event is like and um, some of the <clears throat> uh, projects that they have going on while you're there. So the event actually starts, <coughs> I'm losing my voice again. One second. The event actually starts on Thursday morning at 10 o'clock and it ends on Sunday at 3 o'clock. And I was not able to go for the whole time. So I drove in on Thursday morning and I had to leave Saturday night because I wanted to get back <clears throat> for a couple of family events. Um, many people come in excuse me, on Wednesday and stay until Monday. Now, uh, you have to understand, we have, there are people there, there are 300 people at this first weekend, and then there's a second weekend that started yesterday. Um, and they are coming from all over the world. It's just amazing. We had people there from 
uh, Iceland, a couple from Scotland, a gal from England, and almost every state was represented. It was just amazing. They had everybody stand up. So when you um, arrive at on the opening day, Thursday, you're greeted with a beautiful gift. And the gift this year was this beautiful wool uh, bag from StitchCon. And inside of that bag is a passport. And this booklet has all the information about who the floss tubers are, who are there, and incidentally, not everyone is a floss tuber. Um, the timing of the events, what is happening each day. Um, they give restaurants. They um, There's a chart in here from Sue Hillis. So it, it was a great little gift as a welcome gift. So once you arrive, um, you go in, it's held in, let me backtrack, in the Sharonville Convention Center, which is in Cincinnati, and is only about a three or four miles from Barbara's shop. And uh, it you go down into a ballroom that is on the lower level of the convention center, and there are round tables set up. And I would say there are probably six to seven people that are sitting at each table. And before I went, I it's like being in seventh grade. I decided that I uh, wanted to sit with somebody that I knew. But you know what? There are a lot of people who come here on their own, who know no one, and they have stated over and over again in the webs on the website, I came, I didn't know anybody, I sat at a table, and by the end of the weekend, everyone was my best friend. This community, this stitching community, is so kind. And I forgot to say that at the beginning of my introduction here. I just am so grateful for all of you who take the time to watch, who write the most lovely notes to me. Um, it is so gratifying, and I felt that same way at the StitchCon weekend. People are just, in our community, are just kind and happy and we're all loving the very same thing. So um, my table mates were uh, Chrissy from Finally a Farm Girl, Stitchy Linda, uh, and these gals are all from Florida. Um, let's see, Jennifer from Sweet Chaos Stitcher on Instagram, and Chris Leedy, and I did not get Chris's um, Instagram handle, so I'll have to do that. And we had a great time together. It was so much fun. Never a dull moment. We always had something to talk about. Um, so what what's comes next? There are several things that go on at StitchCon that I want to talk to you about, and they're not mandatory. You can participate if you want to. Maybe a third of the people did, the other two thirds didn't. It doesn't matter. And so one of the first things that happens is that people like to bring gifts for the other people who are there. And of course, with that many, that's quite an undertaking. And so I will show you what I brought. I didn't bring enough for everyone. Let me see if I can get this out of here. So I had my a gift um, packaged in a little paper bag with my business card at the top. And my gift was a set of five um, floss cards and the image on the front is one of the bluebirds from my Bluebird of Happiness sampler. And as I say, I didn't have enough for everyone. I, the first day I was there, I gave away some. And then on uh, Friday, I gave away more. And then I gave away actually all that I had. And then on Saturday, I decided that I wanted to meet more of the people I actually didn't get around to every table. I would have loved to. That would, that will be my goal next year. But I took my business cards and I'd go to as many tables as I could to introduce myself and to meet the other people that were there. So that was fun, but you don't have to do that. But we get tons of gifts. In fact, when I first got to my table that Thursday, it was there was a pile of all kinds of things, need, little needle mind, magnetic needle minders and floss cards and I'm trying to think what else. Um, sometimes just a business card. Um, there were so many neat things. And as I say, you don't have to participate, but boy, is it fun to get all those gifts. 
So another thing that happens is that your um, table mates often give gifts to one another. So Chrissy and Linda went together and they did a, a beautiful bag. Um, Chrissy had put one of her patterns in there. Uh, they had made a mug for each one of us with their image on it and a little note on the back that says, Stitch What You Love, Linda and Chrissy, 2023. Um, the My gift bag for the table, I put in my new ornament booklet. Um, I put this in. I also found some, I wanted some something specific to Kalamazoo where I live. So I found some chocolates and candy uh, nuts rather, rather from a local shop here uh, that does a beautiful job. Uh, let's see, what else did I put in there? Oh, my floss cards. Just little gifts like that. So, um, so we made gifts for everyone at our table, and that's kind of fun. You don't have to do that. Um, another thing that happens is they have a small gift exchange. And again, this is optional. And I hope you're all stitching while I tell you about all of this. So um, when you come in and register, if you're part of the small gift exchange, you pull a little poker chip out of a bag and it's either red, white, or blue. And that tells you what group you're in. And so you're going to look at your calendar in here to see when that chip color is going to be doing the gift exchange. <clears throat> so mine was on Saturday morning. And my gift, I, I did an ornament from my new booklet. Let's see, which one did I do for her? Hmm. Oh, I know, it's not in the new booklet. That's what happened. I stitched this ornament and I was going to put it in the new, new booklet and discover it had already been published. Oh dear. So, <clears throat> but I thought, oh, somebody might love this because it was all finished. So I gave her a Christmas ornament, the new book, a needle minder, um, some scissors that I had, just gifts like that. I forgot to get the name of the, of the person who got my gift. So if you're watching this and, and you know, uh, please write me a little note to so I can uh, <clears throat> thank her again in person. So then when they'll call a set of numbers, there might be 60 people in this group, and they'll say 1 to 20, go to the gift exchange table and get your bag. So you won't believe what I got. It's just gorgeous. It's a little pillow, and it was done by Janine. I love the colors. It's going to fit perfectly here in my office. When I met her, you, you get to meet all the people who make your gifts, of course. Look at the finishing on this. It's perfect. And she said this was the first time she'd done any finishing. Janine, we need lessons from you. It's just gorgeous. I believe the design, someone I had to ask to see if anybody knew, is from Beth from Heartstring Samplery. So if I'm wrong on that, um, please correct me. But I just loved the little gift that I received. So that was so much fun. Then I received other gifts from people who just popped into the table. I loved this because I thought it was such a good idea. This is just a little block of wood and it's covered with scrapbook paper. Um, this is from uh, Kef and, um, oh, oh, I'm drawing a blank. Oh, that's terrible. It will come to me. It's she and her mom. They're just darling. Oh, they're from Utah. Oh, help me, please. It'll come to me. <laughs> Anyhow, she made this and it's kind of decoupaged on the side. Her husband drilled a hole in the top and it's for a scissor holder. Isn't that sweet? I'm going to keep it on my desk. And then someone else came up, Maddie, who I met at Stitchway in January, and gave me this precious little pin cushion. Ah, I just thought of her name. It's Kef and Debbie, and they're from Snug Harbor Crafts. So let me repeat that again. Snug Harbor Crafts, they put on retreats out in Utah. I will write their names below. Oh, I'm so glad it finally came to me. Sorry about that. So Maddie made this darling little pin cushion. We learned to make these actually at the retreat in January. And what I love about it, it's going to fit perfectly into that little um, traveling stitching box that I made. So Maddie, thank you so much. And then this was a gift from Jennifer in her gift bag at our table. And she bought this antique salt cellar and stitched and made it into a darling little pin cushion with a little bee pin.
pin in it. Isn't that sweet? She made one for everyone at our table. So people are so generous. It's just amazing. Um, so another, let's see what else. Oh, I know what else happened at StitchCon. So what do you do at StitchCon, right? There is a lot of talking, not much stitching, a lot of moving around. The interesting thing is I was very worried about 300 people in one room. It just sounded overwhelming. And in a funny way, it's not. People, I mean, they get up to wander. A lot of times the tables aren't full. I'm not even sure where everyone is. They've probably, there's a bus called the Stitchy Bus. And so you, um, and Barbara's husband drives it um, to the shop every few hours. So he'll come up to the podium and say the Stitchy Bus is ready to leave. And you can take that little field trip. Um, I took a little field trip actually. Rose, who I met in January, came over to our table and she's uh, from Cincinnati and she said there's an antique shop near here and about four miles away, does anybody want to go? So Chris and I, Chris who was at my table and I decided that would be fun. So we did that uh, Saturday, did we do that? Or Friday, I've forgotten, doesn't matter. And I didn't find a lot. Actually, we only got through about half of it, it's huge. But I collect, I'm gonna show you real slowly here. I collect antique trays and they are sitting above all of my windows. They're sitting, uh, my desk right here has trays up at the top. The windows over here on the side uh, that are um, like little window seats, they have trays above that window. So I found some wonderful metal, very lovely um, easels. And I bought a couple of those at the that antique show. Uh, let's see, what else do I, oh, I know, I have something else to tell you about. I'm racing here, right, to tell you all about StitchCon because I loved it so much. Uh, one of the things that Barbara does at every event that she hosts is that she comes up with a service project. So when I did her Stitch Away in January, our, her service project was coats for the homeless. And so people either brought coats or they gave money to buy coats. At this event, her service project is called the St. Joseph Home. And it's in Cincinnati and it's quite a remarkable nonprofit organization. And they serve um, babies to adults with serious physical and mental uh, disabilities. Some of the people live in the home, some come only for the day. Um, I think they try to give respite to the caregivers. It is just a remarkable place. And the CEO of uh, St. Joseph Home came and spoke to us about what they do. And so the goal here at the retreat is to raise money for these nonprofit organizations. And they do that, they sell raffle tickets, um, and they have gifts to give away, so they beautiful gifts that they're given away every night. Um, some people just make a donation. Uh, last year, their service project was a bookmobile in Cincinnati that takes books to children uh, at the schools who are, um, you know, very low income areas. They don't receive books. And the group last year, the two StitchCon groups, they follow one weekend after the other, raise $20,000, which is quite remarkable. So we're hoping that we also raise an equal amount this year for the St. Joseph Home. And I think Barbara's gonna do something on her website too in regards to that. Um, I, one of the fun things when I was there is there are a num quite a few designers who attended. Many of them, some I know, um, like Chrissy from Finally a Farm Girl, uh, Liz from Hello from Liz Matthews was there, Cecilia from Heart and Hand was there, Sue Hillis was there, um, Teresa with Needle Bling who dyes fabric and also is a designer, and there were many other designers. So it was kind of fun when I walked around to meet some of the, some of the people who were there. Um, one of the fun things that we did so there are two girls who were at this event. 
uh, Sarah and Jen, and their floss tube is called Stitchy Friends. And I had met them in January. They were part of the Bluebird group. And they're doing a sell, a stitch along, for my Bluebird of Happiness design. So they decided, which was so cute, that anybody who was at this stitch con, who was working on the project or who had just bought the booklet, it was for sale. And they have a little um, annex that is a, like a, a separate room across from our stitching room. And there are, oh my gosh, tons of trunk shows from fabric dyers and designers. Um, it's just marvelous. So people go there to shop. It opens on Friday morning. I think it's open only till noon on Sunday. So my Bluebird of Happiness and my trunk show was at this I'm sorry for the glare, was at this event and we decided, or Sarah and Jen did, that we should get everyone who is working on this together for a group picture. So as you know, I'm not very high tech, but this is the picture that we took at the event. And look at all those people who are either starting it, or uh, incidentally, this is Barbara, the owner of the shop right here. And I'm right there with, oh, I took the model. I took the model from the trunk show in uh, so we could show it. So all those people are either working on it or intend to work on it. So that was a lot of fun to do that. Um, let's see, do I have any other quick news about that? I think that's all. I hope I haven't forgotten anything since this is my second time through with this video. So let's move on to my next topic. Um, and that is antique shopping. So as you know, I told you about the easels I bought. Um, I, my friend uh, Connie called the other day and she there's an antique shop near here, oh, about eight, 10 miles away. She wanted to know if I wanted to go for an hour or so with her daughter. And of course, yes is the answer. And I found some treasures that day. Um, I found this wonderful antique silver plated mirror and I loved the border around the edge of it. And of course, I'm always looking for pieces that I can use to mount my round designs. And I have a new round design coming out in August. And I'm not sure if that one will go on this mirror, but I think one of mine will fit perfectly and it would look so sweet laying on a table or a desk. So that was one of my finds. And then I liked, uh, I'm always looking for antique linens. And I found two great pieces there. I don't know if you can see, but in this chair right here, I have, I'm trying to think of the name of the design. Uh, I think it's Rose Motif Sampler. I'll get it out next week. Anyhow, I used an antique towel to finish the edges of that sampler. So I found this antique towel with a beautiful little striped red edging. And sometimes I make them into pillows for the porch, sometimes it's for finishing. And then I found this wonderful linen table runner. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this yet, but that was a great find too. And then my last antique purchase that I've had this week, or last week, is that I was watching Brenda and Laura from Brenda and the Serial Starter. And they, I think Brenda bought several pieces it's from an estate of Glee Kruger, who was a very well-known collector of antique samplers, um, author, she wrote many books. And she has passed away and her daughter is, I think it's a website actually, I'll look for it and try to link it below, is selling pieces from her mom's collection. And I'm sure a lot had been sold already, there weren't a lot, um, but I decided there was one small marking sampler in blue that I just love that I thought I could afford. And so I bought that sampler and it's it was framed, oh my gosh, it had a folder of all of the research that had been done on this sampler. When Glee bought it, what she paid for it, um, the all the information about the girl who stitched it, it was just a treasure. But in that box with the sampler, were also two of Glee's books, which I wasn't expecting. In fact, I opened the box and took out the sampler and went to put it away and thought, this box is still heavy. 
and oh my gosh, what was in the bottom, but two of Glee's books. And this is called New England Samplers to 1840, which I did not have in my, I didn't have either one of these in my collection. This was published in 1978, and it is a great resource. And then the second book that was in that box was a gallery of American samplers, also written by Glee. It's a hardcover book, a beautiful resource. I can't wait to look through both of these. So wasn't that a find? I just loved it. So those were my antique finds. Um, I just spotted something else on my table that I wanted to show you in regards to finishing, which we talked about a lot in uh, the last couple videos. So people always send me, and I love this, ideas for things that they have found for finishing. And this was a frame um, that Sharon found, and I'll put the link, I'll try to put the link below to that. And it's made by Laura Ashley. And isn't that just gorgeous? I love the look of it. It's actually, you know, to set on a table. And this would be perfect for one of my designs worked over one. So I can't wait to find something to put into this. So thank you, Sharon, for sending that idea. As soon as she sent it, of course, I had to order it right away. So now the next topic that I want to talk to you about, I think I've covered everything with StitchCon. I hope so is um, I have, as you know, been designing for a long time. And it's very interesting to me that uh, when I go to wholesale markets, in other words, it's the Nashville market or needlework marketplace that's coming up in August that is only for shop owners, the shop owners primarily buy what is new, which makes sense. They want you to come to their shop and see all the new things. But what I realized from going to an event like StitchCon or doing Galleria in St. Louis, which is a retail show, I've also done celebrations in New Hampshire, is that when I meet you who are our customers and stitchers, you really don't care if the design that I'm showing is new or old. So as a result, a lot of my older designs are selling well again, and I've had to reprint them, which is great news. I don't reprint a lot of them. It's very costly, and I have to be honest with myself. I'm not going to sell hundreds of these reprints, but people are still buying them. So I want to show you some of the designs that have just been reprinted. So I did this before, so let's try again. So this is a design that's been out for a while. You've probably seen it before. French Country Amour is still selling. So I've just reprinted this, but I wanted to show you a different model of this. So I stitched this design uh, over one, probably on a 28 count uh, fabric, but I left off the wording at the bottom and I framed it just in a tiny little, this is probably about a three and a half, four inch uh, gold frame that I'd had. I've had this for quite a while, but it sits on my bookcase and I always love seeing it there. Another design that I've just reprinted, and this came out quite a while ago, is Christmas Pear Tree. You know I love designing my little Christmas trees. Let's see, uh, this is about 10 years old. And this was uh, finished as an easel. This is what the design looks like. Let me see, it was stitched on a polka dot fabric from Fabric Flare, and it has faded quite a bit. I don't think you can see the polka dots on my screen here, but I stitched it in, let's see, oh, you could do any color you wanted, and you often do. This was stitched in steamed broccoli, which is a, a crescent color, or I'm sorry, classic color works color. Crescent Colors was actually the company before Classic Color Works, so that is a reprint. Another reprint that I've just done um, that is very timely is Summer in the Round, and I've seen some wonderful, wonderful uh, finishes of this design recently. So I finished this. It, actually, it's missing a piece, so I have to be careful with this here. Finished this in a frame that I found at Hobby Lobby, and it has two pieces of glass that slide in this opening. It's actually quite a neat thing. And so I 
used scrapbook paper that matched the colors of the model that I stitched and I put the scrapbook paper between the layers of glass and then I just glued my model onto the center of this frame. And as I've said, I've seen this finished recently as it's shown here in the booklet uh, as the top of a jar with shells inside. So that is back in stock again. Let's see, what else have I, oh, I've also reprinted this one, which is um, Birds and Berries, which still continues to sell quite well. And that, as I say, has been out for a while. This is what the booklet looks like. Let's see, it was stitched on a 28 count linen over two. It's not that large, it's 132 by 100. And let's see, what fiber did I use? Let's look it up here. I used Ribbon Red from Classic Color Works which I'm just using on a design the other day. Um, and this is called Birds and Berries Antique Alphabet. And all of the uh, alphabet and the border were taken from antique samplers. All right, I have another couple to show you. There are a couple that I've reprinted that I don't have the models of. They're out at trunk shows. So I've reprinted French Country Bunny. Um, there's a little glare on that. Annie from the Proper Stitcher did a darling finish of this. I've reprinted the Queen Bee because bees uh, designs are so popular lately and I've seen really cute finishes of this one. I'll have to look for some for you. I reprinted the Scotty Dog and I also reprinted Peace on Earth, which is another one of my Christmas tree designs. And then I have two more to show you. So this is kind of a fun pair. Um, as you know, I love alphabets and I love to figure out how I can make a design using an alphabet. So this is called, oh gosh, I almost lost you again. This is called alphabet dogs. So each little dog has the alphabet of part of its design. The finishes on these are beautiful. They're finished. The, the, Velcro on the back, as I always explain, is for display. So these are finished as a flat, and I use tiny little doggy charms at the bottom. And then this is, there are two uh, versions of the dog in the booklet. And again, I use the little dog charms on the bottom of this. So that is from Alphabet Dogs, and this is what that booklet looks like. And so if you do dogs, you have to do cats. And this is what the cat one looks like. So here's our little kitty cats. Again, they have charms at the bottom and they're finished as a flat. So we did um, talked about flat finishes last week with the ornaments. That This would be the, the very same kind of finish. So uh, what do I want to talk to you about next? I have my list of things here. I have uh, I think I've covered everything so far except for this topic. So I thought I would pull out again some of my models that are finished in such a unique way because I kind of have this theory or philosophy maybe that the finishing that you do is going to affect the look of how your project is at the end. And I, my designs are actually quite simple, but if they're finished beautifully, then it just kind of sets them apart. And so I, this finisher that did the ones I'm going to show you right now is no longer um, working. And it makes me so sad because her work was outstanding. And I don't know what happened. I don't know if she was ill. Um, I, I really don't. So the designs I'm going to show you right now are from my Seaside series. And I have, you know, I love to do series. So I didn't pull out all the books, but I have um, designs. Again, the glare is on here. There, I think, are eight now in this series. And each booklet has two designs in it that have a Seaside theme, obviously. So I'm going to show you these because they're so clever. Um, she finished them as a flat. So you can see this here. This is from Seaside 2. I'll show you the book in a minute. She used wool around the edges here. 
and she hand stitched a blanket stitch around that and then mounted the flat on that wool and padded it and added ribbons and a bow to the top. But you can see she put a pole in here and you're probably saying, what, what is that for? Well, it was intended to go, and this is how I had it on display for a long time, into a child's sand pail filled with sand and then, or you could just fill it with shells up at the top. And it was the cutest display. I don't know, here we go. Uh, I have a picture of it. So this is what, there were four designs. It's kind of pale. You can see how it was sitting in a pail with all these little designs. She also finished it as a little banner. I forgot to pull that out. It's so cute. Almost like a little um, sailing banner. So the pelican and the seashell are in book two. And as I say, the finishing is just exquisite. And then in book three, we have, let me pull these out. We have the dolphin and the crab. And these designs really are very much like my French country designs. If you study them, you can see that the designs are made up of uh, seaside motifs. So for instance, in the dolphin, he has a little more space for motifs. There's a fish and a seahorse and a bird and a lighthouse and a shark and a sailboat and an anchor and fish. So there's so much fun to design. And again, her finishing is just exquisite. Mounted on the wall, mounted a flat piece on the top. And you wouldn't, of course, wouldn't have to do the, this method, but I thought you might want to see something that's a little different. Actually, when I was at StitchCon, uh, the girl on, at the table behind me was stitching a couple of these for her daughter. And um, she just loved them. She said to me, do you have a whale? And I said, oh, not yet. Oh, she said, please design a whale. So that may be in the next Seaside series. <clears throat> so there are two more that I want to show you today. Um, this is, let me get them together so I have them as a pair here. So this is Seaside 4. Oh, I didn't bring up both models. That's too bad. It's okay. So this one is from Seaside 4 and is a lobster. And this is what the booklet looks like. And in the booklet is a lobster. And can you see that? Just a little turtle, tiny little sea turtle. And she finished them both, mounting them as a flat on a piece of felt, of course, to look like a life preserver. Isn't that just darling? And she did the other one here the little turtle is mounted on felt too. I'm sorry, the glare. I should turn my light a little bit. And that is mounted as, as if it's a beach ball. So the finishing on that was darling. I also framed those pieces. And then the last two I have to show you are from Seaside Series 5. And one is the seagull and one is the conch shell. So the seagull was finished as a child's pail. Again, just using wool. You can find wool online. Isn't that just, I mean, it's fabulous. That's the only word I can think of. And then the conch shell, she finished on wool with the three little buttons at the bottom and the felt stitched to look like a shell. Just gorgeous. So I thought you'd enjoy those. I always am trying to inspire you, and I hope I've done that today. So what else do I have to talk about? Let's see, I'll run through the rest here. I always like to pull um, a shop, um, a locally owned mealwork shop um, from my files to tell you about. And um, each week or each time I do a video, I try to feature a shop. I try to be very supportive of our crusted shops. If you don't have one nearby, the names that I give you, you can do a screenshot of and you can always call them. Um, the shops I've been showing lately are all on my automatic, which means they carry my designs automatically when they're published. And so the shop today that I'm featuring is called the Tin Smith's Wife. And she is in Comfort, Texas. Her address is 405 7th Street, 
Susan is her name. Here's her phone number. I'll take a minute to show you that. And then this is her email address. So it's Tin Smith's wife, hctc.net. So let me hold that a minute so you can take a shot of it. She has a wonderful shop. I have seen pictures of it. It looks absolutely charming. So I'm happy to feature um, Susan's shop today. And I hope if you're looking for anything and can't find it, that you'll give her a call or go onto her website and order something. So I always like to do giveaways in each of my videos. And my giveaways are a little different probably than most people's. I just look at the comments. I use a random number generator and I randomly pick out three numbers and I figure out who that was and I give a prize. And the prize is always, you can choose one of the booklets that I've shown in my video today. And last time I had all three people contact me, so that was a good day. Um, my winners today, so watch for your name or listen for it, are Nancy Peterson, Mary Ava, and Mary, your last name is spelled A-V-A-U-X. What a pretty name. And the last one is Diane Moberg. So I hope you're watching sometime um, during the next few weeks. The best way to contact me is to email me, and it's judy at jbwdesigns.com. Um, you can also go onto my Instagram, which is judy.whitman. I'll put this all below. Uh, let's see, what else can I tell you? I have a Friends of JBW Design Facebook page, and people post their finishes on there. You have to um, kind of enter, and I, I let you in, but everybody is let in, so it's not a big deal <clears throat> to sign up for that page to see what other people are finishing. And then I also have a website, and it's jbwdesigns.com. I do have a shop on my website, and it's labeled that in the... Um, uh, content below and I only post in the shop older designs that are not really being sold to the shop. So you might find something in there you want, otherwise I'd contact a shop to order things that you're interested in. So I always have a quotation and then I want to talk about uh, this weekend. So my quotation for today is one that I found from Needlework Retailer, uh, the magazine that we all get as um, a wholesale person. So this was what it was. I thought it was perfect. Stitching is a process of learning and growing, of creating something beautiful and unique. Soak up every moment of it and enjoy the journey. And we all, oh my gosh, just love what we're doing, don't we? So this is Father's Day weekend. I am very lucky. I know that I am. I had a wonderful father who has really inspired me. Um, he had quite a remarkable background. Someday I'll tell you about that. I have a wonderful husband who's a good husband to our two children and six grandchildren. My son and my son-in-law are such good dads. I couldn't ask for any more. And now we have a grandson who's going to be a father too. I'm getting very emotional about this. So I want to wish the men in your family who are fathers, happy Father's Day. And I hope that you're able to remember or honor them in some way. We're going to have a, a picnic on Sunday. So um, what have I been doing lately? I'm working on new designs. I'm charting, I'm stitching, and I couldn't be happier. That's a great thing to be able to do. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in two weeks. We'll see what happens. That's close to, um, uh, let's see, 4th of July. So that's going to be a hectic weekend in our family, but that's okay. I hope to be back soon. And thank you so much for watching. I can't thank you enough. Bye-bye.